This man is protecting a bird's nest. One he has been filming for four weeks. There's definitely something moving about. And he is not alone. From country lawns to urban backyards, there is now a growing number of amateur Attenboroughs. This dedicated band of enthusiasts are spending hundreds of hours and thousands of pounds filming the hidden lives of the wildlife in their gardens. Ah! Oh. Yes! Building bonds with their newfound friends. Oh, what's happening here? I've just yeah. picked up on my infrared light two yeah. eyes. There is no shortage of stories emerging from behind the privet hedge. A fine day in prospect, a lot of dry weather around. Top temperature on the day could easily push to 24, 25. And I suspect most areas will be comfortable. Summer has arrived in leafy Suffolk. Across one sprawling half-acre lawn, all creatures great and small are welcome to make a home. But this is a wildlife garden with a difference. The animals here are under 24-hour surveillance. The first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning is the cameras. And it's the last thing I check when I go to bed at night. No creature can escape the owner's all-seeing eye. I've got a camera in the nest box on the front of the house, two on the blackbird, two on the bee box, one in the blue tip box, squirrel box, hog box, owl box. Well, I've probably got nearly 30. She's on the nest at the moment to try and get another camera on. Once she leaves, it's going to take me 10 seconds or less. After 10 years of garden watching, this will be the 140th nest Jason has fitted with a camera. Over the years, I've recorded probably thousands of hours of footage. From nest box to hog home, a kilometre of cabling weaves its way into Jason's monitoring room. I've got the ability here to have my own little mini spring watch 365 days of the year. And I pretty much spend 365 days of the year watching the cameras. While his wife is at work and teenage son at school, Jason watches over his garden wildlife characters and streams his remarkable footage live across the world. Oh, this, this is the kind of stuff I never get bored of seeing. The latest object of his fascination is a family of robins. Robins are my favourite bird in the garden. You see just how intimate their relationship is, and you, then you hear the, the female chattering away to the chicks. It's a, a lovely family scene. If the chicks can survive five more days, they will be ready to fledge. For Jason, watching his garden guests fly the nest will be the highlight of the summer. The British garden comes in many shapes and sizes. On a new build estate in Somerset, one couple are making the most of their eight meter square pocket of green. Wildlife here may be thin on the ground, but they've come up with their own way of bringing the garden to life. Right, we're on. Guys, what are you? Uh, what, what are we filming today? We are going to film tadpole tails number three because the weather's perfect. We had uh, frogs born in the pond for the first time this year, which is really exciting. And we thought, why don't we film it through, you know, its whole. Uh, this whole sort of sequence of, you know, egg, tadpole, frog. It's like a Diddy wildlife thing, isn't it? Because I present, we use the aspect in it to make it more interesting, you know, put somebody in there that can link all these bits together. Otherwise, you've got just footage. And, and, people, um, and people think, well, that's, it's that's great, nice. but it's only a tadpole. Uh, well, OK. Uh, I have my container and I have my net. 
Let's do a bit of pond dipping. L.B. Loxley, as he calls himself, has always had a passion for wildlife. When his wife Amanda picked up the camcorder five years ago, L.B. saw the chance to realise his childhood dreams of presenting. What I love about this hobby is that you never know what you're going to get. Since then, they have reported from every corner of the garden. The animals we see most are mainly insects, damselflies, butterflies and bees. We also That's like bees and beetles. Bees and beetles. I don't mind it before. Right, time to check the trap. This filmmaking duo now have 82 films on their YouTube channel. Great. Look at that, he's got back legs. He's got back legs. He has back legs, yes. This summer, they are hoping to turn their amateur passion into something bigger. Are you selling these films? Um, I don't think it'd be much of it big enough to sell. But the thing is, you don't know who's watching it on YouTube. It comes a time when somebody might say, I like that, could you make that into a thing for me? Yeah, sure, we do it. So David Attenborough, Chris Packham, Simon King. They've achieved it. Mm. You know, I'm still climbing the ladder. It's gonna be good tapple tails, this is. I don't know how many I'm gonna do till we finish. He's got the back legs, got the front legs to get. As the sun rises over the capital, the rat race begins. Between concrete and cars, the wildlife here must fight to survive. But you'd be surprised what you can see and hear at the bottom of one West London garden. Oh, that's oh, endearing. How look, could anybody... Come to head up. Just any, see how that? could anyone not say that's endearing? Oh, she looks a good way. Lovely red coat. I love the way she looks at the camera like that. It's like, thanks, thanks. For married couple Mark and Rod, their daily routine begins by checking on the activities of a nocturnal visitor. So this morning when he started going, oh my God, oh my God, come and have a look, come and have a look. Um, <laughs> I knew that he was very happy with what he caught on the trail cam. The night cam footage shows from around 10.30 last night, we had an entrance from the new boy on the block. We were able to establish this was not Eton, this was not Cambridge, this is actually Eton's boyfriend. This is the new guy on the block, really excited to He's see He's got a nice scene. leopardy shape to the head, hasn't he? Yeah. You've sexed the uh, new boy as a definite dog fox because yeah, you sexed I've, his bits. I've had to watch a, a few times because it's literally just seeing, you're just looking and looking and looking and I had to stop, go back, stop, go back. But I can confirm that, yeah, he's a boy. When they met 25 years ago, the joys of fox watching weren't high on Mark and Rod's agenda. When I moved to London, I had absolutely no animals in my life. I was working, I was out every weekend. I was working in the city, focused on making money, and would have absolutely no empathy at all with nature. Then, 10 years ago, illness forced Mark to retire. In need of help to get around, Rod has now become his carer. When you said to me that you felt like you were fed up, that you felt like there was nothing in your life anymore except for the wildlife and, and the fact that your disability meant that you couldn't even come out of the house. Yeah, I was pretty good. So you were trapped indoors and you were probably at your lowest ebb. Every time, it's Mother Nature and the animals that brings you back in full strength. It's almost like they show themselves to help them and help Mark. Oh, he's passed up on the sausage roll and he's decided no, to I have noticed the kibble. that. Eden immediately had that sausage roll when she came back. There's loads of material. I'll never get bored. No. British wildlife. It may not be exotic, but with cameras accessible to all and an internet hooked on home movies, it has never been so popular. housing estate in the Midlands, one of Britain's most devoted nature lovers is 15-year-old Georgia. I just got back from school and this is my bedroom. It's all wildlife-based, different to do things to do with wildlife. Red fox, roe deer, puffin, a peregrine falcon, short eared owl, hedgehog, 
And then I've got my bookshelf here with all my books on. Um, How to Watch Wildlife Bloody. Chris Packham, Chris Packham. This is like my wildlife pin board. Um, that might dild yeah. Simon King at the Bird Fair. Now, that was when I met Chris Packham last year, I think it was. I do see him as quite an inspiration and, yeah. <laughs> is there anyone who you'd love to meet? Not now I've met Chris Packham, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so, no. <laughs> Inspired by her heroes, Georgia's wildlife adventures have seen her capture badgers, otters and herons and tweet them across the world. But in the garden at home, she has to compromise. Because it is a family garden, I've got my mum, my dad and my brother here, yeah? and I've got to share it a bit. This is my bug hotel, one of my favourite features in the garden and what I'm generally proud of. Here's my wild area. It's definitely one of my favourite places in the garden. I've cordoned it off with like bamboo so my mum doesn't accidentally go over it with a lawnmower because I'd be quite devastated if she did. It's nice just to sit there and with my camera getting pictures through the grass and through the hawthorn hedges. It's like a completely different world to me. She may only have one trail camera bought with her pocket money, but no matter how humble the creature, all are special enough to appear on George's blog. I've had wood mice and field mice and the hedgehogs, bees and spiders. But there is one animal she would love to catch. Foxes would be brilliant. I love, I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a real mammal. I, I love different mammals. But in my garden, I like seeing that I'm really giving local wildlife a helping hand. Even if it's in the middle of a housing state, they've got somewhere to come in and just be. For Jason, no time or expense is spared in providing bed and board for his garden guests. If he is not watching them, he is making things for them in his gadget lab. You stick that to the window and that makes a fantastic little window bird feeder. Little snowman bird feeder. The water level drops in here and it fills itself up from the bottle. It's fun with the kids. Hang that up in the, in the tree. Jason and his wife, Debbie, have been together since high school. When I first met him, there was an interest there, but probably not. It's grown into something much more than, you know, when we first met. It can be 24-7. Sometimes you just want a bit of housework done or a bit of DIY done, and he's obviously out setting up new cameras. How much money is the Wix cost? Um, I... I would say probably over the years, I've, it's probably 20, 25,000, I would think. Maybe a little bit more. Jason is now hoping there is a way he can get a return on his investment and feather the family nest while pursuing his hobby full time. While Debbie works for a caravan company as a bookkeeper, Jason has set himself up as wildlife gadget man. I kind of thought, you know, there's a potential gap in the market here. There's experience and ideas that I have that could help others share in the in the interest and the excitement and the and the thrill of wildlife. But one family member's taste for wildlife could sabotage the plan. Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, our cat. <laughs> um, yeah, she's not very popular at the moment. Um, she is, well, she's housebound, shall we say, until the nesting season is over. She is really good at catching the birds. I don't think she's that happy about it, because as soon as the door's left open, she'll try and make a dash. In case Millie does fancy a snack in the garden, Jason has even designed a water pistol system to deter any feline intruders. <laughs> It's a constant battle, really, a daily battle, I'd say, <laughs> with me and Sam sort of defending Millie, but obviously Jason's just, you know, he'd rather she wasn't in the household, I think, at the moment. I'm not a cat person. I'll give her a tickle, but if I'm honest, Debs can't hear me, can she? You know, I, I could take or leave her, to be honest. I've just 
just seen a frog. Let's pop him back and see if we can find any tadpoles instead. Over 200 miles away in Somerset, Amanda and LB are putting the final touches to their latest video. What are you doing, LB? Just putting down some dubbing for um, Tadpole Tales 3. All the dubbing that we do for any programme is always done this way. It's standard. When Amanda met LB at 17, he was already far from conventional. His entire bedroom was done out like a 17th century study with candles. And he would leave his window open at night so that in the morning he could collect the moths off the window or the, or the ceiling or something. He used to collect all sorts of different birds and bits and pieces that were injured and look after them. And he used to dress up in his 17th century costume to do his diary. I used to believe that I was born in the wrong time, that um, I was kind of transported from here, uh, from the 17th century, which is that what inspired me to write my diaries, because I called them um, the diary of a 17th century Englishman living in the 20th century, which it was at that time when I started in 1984. Since having their first child, who was born with a disability, Amanda and LB have wanted flexible work so they can be at home to help when needed. That's a good girl. While their passion for wildlife doesn't pay the bills, they've started making wedding videos to help get by. Not what I want to do personally, but it, it, it puts, you know, it puts food on the table. So that's why we do it. At 52 years old, LB still dreams of greater things. This is the original diary, the very first diary. I wrote a poem in there as well, fair enough. I started with a poem, The Garden. I had this image in my mind of a nice green lawn outside the grounds of a, a manor house or something big, old-fashioned walled garden. And it felt so real that, you know, I really thought it was, you know, it was going to happen. Strange what you can believe sometimes. This garden I see in my mind, is it not? In a county of England, in a time I know not. This garden I see, there is me plus three. We sit and eat cake, I have a dog at my knee. If this garden be real, then let me return, for it is there and not here, to live I do yearn. On the borders of an industrial estate in Reading, it's time for afternoon tea. I would love to know what's going through their mind. We well, don't know, do you? We just don't. There is something flying around in there, you know? There's a fly or something in there. Or is it shadow? Shadow from... <laughs> yeah, that was massive. That was one of the biggest poos I've seen taken away this last week. For David and Lorna, the wildlife watching bug started when David was given a camera voucher as a retirement present. This is the first season that I've actually done this sort of work, so it's all new to me. Far more technical than I ever used to be, but um, it's not my forte technology. The children may have long flown the nest, but there's a 40-foot garden bursting with life. For his first summer of dedicated garden watching, David is hoping to film one of Britain's most elusive birds. There is something spiritual about seeing something as beautiful as swifts flying about. Uh, they fly from Africa to this country and they do everything on the wing. It'll be a hard catch for a beginner, but he has a camera-rigged box at the ready in case any passing swift wants to make it their home. Wildlife is not something that I've suddenly become attracted to. Um, it all goes back to my childhood days, I think. These are some books that I wrote when I would have been about 10 or 11 years old. The blue tits, another very popular little acrobatic bird. Nest of moss, wool and feathers in a hole, tree or wall or in an odd place such as a letterbox or street lamp. 
high tinkling song repeating two or three times. Such a warmer though generally across the country tomorrow. Highs around 17 or 18 across the northern half of the UK. In Cheshire, the childhood joys of wildlife watching are still very much alive. This is our HQ of our recording studio, if you like. This map is a plan view of our garden. I'm going to write down all the species I've seen, and over the years I'll be able to see how wildlife distributions in the garden has changed. What happens if you get way too much in there? What are you going to do? Well, if we get way too much on there, I will just... I'll draw an arrow and then I'll write oh. how many others oh. are there. So it's going to... Hopefully this will work really well. This weekend, 12-year-old Finlay and his 10-year-old brother Harley are doing a tally of all the creatures they can find in the garden. All together, I think we get about 50 to 60 different species. Now, I'm going to have a little venture and see yeah. what I can find. I think I should have an adventure as well. So, let's go. It was Finlay himself who discovered his passion, much to the surprise of his parents. When he was five, six, something like that, they used to watch wildlife from his bedroom window. Yes, mugs, young earwigs, ants. And he got a, his first pair of binoculars. And, you know, we just soon outgrow those, outgrew those because they weren't, you know, they weren't good enough and he wanted a proper pair. To the bees, to see the starling. So far, I've found 15 species. Um, there you go. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Don't continually throw things at me because I've already. I need to record all this. The level of his passion and the fact that he has, you know, already sort of decided on a career path he wants to take is quite unusual. An ant. Yep. Jackdaw. Yep. Blackbird. Yep. Male and female. You don't need that. All right. Howl sparrow. Yep. Tadpole. Yep. Blue tit. Yep. Spider. Yep. Seven spot ladybird. And yes. Oh, it's a blue tit. So I'm looking at the bird house quick. Yeah. Oh, it's in here. One of them in the garden for quite a while. If you do stop to notice the animals in the garden. There's definitely only four in there, isn't there? There's oh, not. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. You may soon find that their lives start shaping yours. Fox. There's a juvenile starling on the fat balls. Ooh. Great tip. Great tip. Oh, is it done? Oh, that's brilliant, that is. How steep is that? Oh, what was that? Oh, look, there he is there. Oh, There's the Robin. Yeah. He's just flew out. That's one of the other ones. That is very promising, that is. Mm. That pigeon has just, has just um, almost the, knocked a couple of goldfinches off. Bang on the window. Shit. Jumper, 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 jumper. Bins, must take me binoculars. Binoculars. But sometimes the garden isn't quite big enough for one man's ambitions. It's like Michael Penny going up to the Sahara, isn't it? Off your expedition? Yeah, expedition. One of LB and Amanda's videos has been spotted, and they've been asked to turn their talents to a creature they've only read about in books. Well, normally we just go through wildlife, and whatever turns up, turns up. But this is a specific trip to film a documentary about wild boar. Four, five, six. They won't be paid, but this could lead to the presenting break that LB has been waiting for. Oh, I'm buzzing. I'm really buzzing. It's really exciting stuff, yeah. Three. It's what I want to do, so... You don't always have to leave the garden to witness nature's wilder side. On waking, Jason started his daily routine by immediately checking his monitors. First thing I saw was the empty nest. And so my first thought was that they'd fledged in the early hours. But looking back at the footage, something rather different has happened. At 12.41, this happened. 
I was absolutely gutted. Within 10 seconds, all the Robin chicks are dead. I never usually get emotional, but another three or four days, they'd have been out of the nest and then they'd have had a bit more of a chance. But this enemy did not come from within. A feral creature has been prowling the garden and it's been caught on camera before. I tried to do everything that I could and the damn black cat still managed to find it, still managed to get them. With only two nests remaining and the black cat still at large, Jason has decided he is not willing to let nature take its course. You can see here that I, I tried to um, offer a little bit of protection. The, the cat tries and get up either this way or up this way. There's mesh in the way and will hopefully be enough to, to deter it. If that doesn't work, then I don't know what I can do. Being invited into someone's home can cause tension. But when you're captured on camera here, there are unexpected benefits to be had. Tell them the news. Well, what's the news then, Ross? What do you mean, what's the news? Eaton's got worms. Well, that's... OK. That's yeah. the news. The news is, yeah. is we caught some Through footage, footage this morning. We wouldn't know this if we hadn't run the footage, would we? No. Because she doesn't demonstrate this behaviour usually. She's yeah, got worms. That's the yeah, worms. We need to get that sorted out. I'd never really thought about any problems that they could have. And then one day, Oscar was in the garden and he brought this little female into our lives. This is Helen. As you can see, she's got mange. She had a limp. She looked very thin and her eyes were all gunked up with conjunctivitis. Every picture I took of her, was painful for me because oh, I, I suffer pain. I have to take pain management every single day and have been for 10 years. And uh, I'm lucky that I have something to, to dampen my pain and my discomfort. This was the day when I absolutely cried my eyes out and asked Rod, what could we do? So this is a Four Seasons wormer. It's a homeopathic wormer that we're using. Hibiscus thyme ginger root, clove, natural salt, organic bitter apple, and hom. OK, so these are some sausages we prepared last night. They didn't get them last night because they had sausage rolls last night. Helen was the first in the Fox family to try out Mark and Rod's bespoke remedy. I was in my kitchen and, I don't know, it was just joy, just, just, just sheer joy. You can see her eyes are much better. Her fur's all sorting itself out. I don't know, it was kind of... For a nanosecond, it was like winning the lottery. Mark has now become an ambassador for urban foxes. While many city dwellers consider them a pest, he and Rod are now helping new generations to thrive. Well, we need a zoom lens on it, or we we'll get that far away from them. Well, I'll start off by being a reasonable distance away from them. Amanda so and LB have arrived in the forest of Dean. Melbourne get quite big, probably mm. half the size of your car up here, and can be intimidating. Yeah. So we'll follow your lead then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go and find some wild boar. Rob is from the Wild Boar Association. They've invited LB and Amanda to film. What we're going to do now is just walk up the path only slightly and then we're going to go into the forest. Um, so that's where we're going to find the boar. OK, right. And you can see evidence, obviously, all over, the, all over the ground. For the first day of filming, he's offered to help Amanda and LB track down these mysterious creatures. OK. If you look just, just down here, the tree is opposite. You see all the mud? where they've rubbed up against the trees. So we just need to just concentrate on this area a little bit. There are reputed to be up to 800 boar roaming the forest. Does he smell the boar now? It smells a bit like a farmyard. So we're close then, are we? They are in the area, yeah. Right. We are probably not long now. <laughs> Where'd they go? 
But with 27,000 acres to cover, there are many places for a boar to hide. I mean, I can think this pig be so hard to find. I wonder if they're watching us, trying to watch them. After four hours, the boar have been smelt, but none have been seen. Could be anywhere, literally anywhere around here. It's just so big, so much of it. This is far beyond anything we've ever done before. It is far beyond it, yeah. Sometimes it pays to be hidden. Wood pigeon, jackdaw, starling, jay. What? Flying across the wood. With almost a hundred species spotted so far, Finlay and Harley continued their wildlife count. It's all oh, raven. I'm looking for swallow. We've had this hide about a year now. And sometimes we um, have our breakfast in here. I normally sit there, here, something normally sits here. I'm just watching all the birds fly around. Sometimes they walk on the roof. You're so close to the birds, but yet they don't really notice you as you're all in here, nice and cosy. What do you think your friends are up to today? Um, Xboxing, game, well, all games, really. Yeah, probably the same of mine. So do you know anyone your own age who's as interested in nature as you are? No. Nope. Apart from the people um, I know on social media, you also share a passion like me. But as you, like, drift into high school, you lose the sense to talk to other people. I think it's just the way that the way that happens that the more unusual hobbies you, hobbies you don't take tend to share unless you get bullied or made fun of and things like that. Black headed gull. My hobby seems to be quite different to most people. I suppose I know a lot about one thing, and it's wildlife and outdoors and stuff. I seem to be quite alienated from most people. I like to just keep myself to myself. School's out and Georgia's discovered a place where one of her favourite mammals is rumoured to be hanging out. I'm just setting my trail camera up as I normally do, like in my garden or wherever, but I'm actually on a, an area of my school field. If you look around, there's like bits of rabbits everywhere. There's a rabbit leg there. Under that tree, I notice there's a full skeleton with fur still stuck on. I've never recorded foxes before, so it's a first, this is. Some of my friends, they don't really understand why I find it so interesting and stuff. But now I just don't care really. It's like my hobby and what I enjoy doing. I'm not following like what they do. I do what I want to do. Oh, what was that noise? That wasn't a... Oh, that was a blackbird. Every tree is absolutely full of, of starlings and those swifts. David has decided that watching and waiting is not enough. I'm sure I haven't forgotten anything. I think I've got He's anything. dusted off oh, some old technology. CD, CD player. Get the volume right. The sound isn't of the best quality, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine for what we're, we're using it for outside. With his bespoke set up ready to go, David plans to fill the skies of Reading with the call of his favourite bird. If the swifts hear the sound of their fellow species, the hope is that they'll swoop into the box to make it a home. Oh, yes. Brilliant. That'd be brilliant if it worked. Yes. It? I'm going to keep little... thinking every bird that flies over is a swift now.
a long way from their garden and with no sightings of boar. LB and Amanda are making the most of what evidence they can find. I was hoping for the three, you know, the possible routing, the footprint and the boar poo. Well, you could skip the footprint and you could just do routing and poo. True, true, I could, yeah, that's true. It's really important, something he's wanted to do, something, it's so much bigger than bits we've put together before just for us. Okay. And that he really would be gutted if we got nothing here. So just imagine the ball's here, up here somewhere, head down, rooting around in the undergrowth like this. If he's happy doing it, I'm fine with that, I'll go with that. If he said, no, I'm giving it up tomorrow, I'd go with that. But no, he won't give it up. He'll fight for it as long as he can. Trouble is now, I'm, I'm, I want to go, I want to get going, get it, you know, getting into the, the presenter mode, as it were, you know, when mm -hmm. you want to just do it and get it done. I don't want to lose the energy, because you do kind of build up an energy, energy for this. You know, I'm sitting here trying to psych myself up to being a wild boar. Deer, over the back. It's fallow deer, just run down the side there. Wow. She won't get that on camera. Oh, she's like lightning when there's wildlife. I used to be like that myself. But I need the sun cream. It may not be a boar, but it's wildlife. So you've got something to show people at least. Where's she gone? From dawn till dusk, the natural world is full of surprise. But when the sun begins to set, even more lies in store, as a whole new parade comes out after dark. While recording nocturnal happenings is challenging enough, for the most spellbound of them all, there is no greater thrill than witnessing wildlife at night. Saturday night, yeah. it's quarter to ten, and basically I've just I'm trying it out another different technique for moth trapping. It's a bit of a last minute one, and hopefully it'll attract a moth. Right. Let's christen it then. For David and Lorna, it's their first evening in their very own suburban tree hide. Hope we see something. We've never done it before, so we don't know, do we? Yeah, so it's all out. Right. No. The swifts have probably gone to bed. Finlay and Harley are hoping for a catch that will boost their wildlife tally. Well, the moths will start clearing soon. And there are bats and hedgehogs to look forward to as well. Here's my feed and here's my station all set up. I've got the camera, dog food, mealworms there, and hoping some clean water. So hopefully I've done all my can now to try and lure him into the garden. Oh, this is lovely. I love this. <laughs> I do. And the idea is to keep quiet. There's a moth, moths. Moth, look at that. I said we had to be quiet. There's loads of moths. Well, there's two. You know, so we both flew into the tree. Let's look out. Oh, bat, 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 bat. Did you see that? Did you, yeah, did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? It went just over our heads. Did you see that, Sam? Yes. Right, here we go. <laughs> the excitement starting now. Oh, there it is. What was it? I've just yes. picked up on my infrared light two yeah. eyes. It's. Is it, a, is it a cat? Oh, already there's three months. Tomorrow moths. we should get some good stuff. And a lot of hard work identifying moths. Thing is, you would have to spend all night out here, I think, to see anything meaningful. Tonight, overall, there's been the moths. This new moth idea hasn't been the best. And um, so I know that's. And um, the hedgehog hasn't gone. And. Um, oh, I think I've been bit on my back. Today, the skies over Reading are distinctly lacking in swifts. But being a Thursday, David and Lorna have plenty of other things to be busy with. 
well, <laughs> we decided when David retired that we, we would have what we call a me day when we each do our own thing. And that, in theory, is a Thursday. What I'm doing at the moment is uh, just creating a habitat for the uh, for the mice. He's, he's always finding something to do, a project or something. We built that, what we call the bandstand. He just decided he would do it. But you see, again, let's find out if he can do it. But what do we do when he gets old? There was a time we thought about leaving. And that wasn't because we were unhappy here. It was purely the fact of looking to the future, of how we would cope um, with a garden. But as we talked about it and thought about it over the days, weeks, months, it became evident that we could never leave here. Is there anything you'd ever want to change about? Not really, I suppose. I've you know, been together too long to... Perhaps it could, I'd say be a bit more romantic, but he, he is in his own way. I think he can't say things. But I, I spent... I say a lot of time looking after his mother. It wasn't a lot of time. When she died, he um, left me a hard on the kitchen worktop with a, a necklace just to say thank you for looking after Mum. So I think he finds it difficult to say these things. I mean... Mm. So, um... No, I don't suppose I'd change. <laughs> We've been together too long, I suppose. Elby Locksley was invented. It goes back a long way. Um, I, for my sins, apart from this, my hobbies are singing, songwriting, and uh, I wanted a name that um, was a bit different that people would remember. Do you want my name, real name? Shall I reveal it? I don't normally. It's only a secret, but okay. It's Lee Barton, but I, I hate it. Lee is an average guy that has an average job that if you saw a camera would run a mile and hide. I always had the desire um, to do what I'm doing now, but I didn't have the guts to do it. Um, you know, I, I just wouldn't have been able, he wouldn't have been able to do it. He couldn't have done it. Um, so there had to be a change or, you know, you spend a whole life frustrated, you know. I think if Lee was an animal, he'd be a tortoise. Loxley, I would say, is probably a lion or something that sees something and just goes for it, you know, claws out, grab it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mad as a hatter. How are we doing on the ball front? Dead as a dodo. Dead as a dodo. While our countryside dwindles and our cities grow, our fascination with the natural world has never been greater. We may see it less and less for real, but there's a comfort in knowing it is still there. However, switching off can be hard when the animals have made a home on your doorstep. Anything? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a little field mouse. Fear 
fearful that the black cat will return for the two remaining nests, Jason is going further than he has in 10 years of garden watching. He is going to camp out under the birds. Every night, the first thing I have to do is pump up the air bit because all the air's come out. Uh, I'm not going to be able to catch it. All I, need, all I want to try and do is, is, is buy time for those chicks until they fledge. Yeah. One more flick through the cameras. Something's been in there. Something's definitely been in there. This is their token of a nest, what they've done there. And their droppings there, aren't they? Yeah. After four patient weeks, David has finally caught a glimpse of something in his swift box. Hello, boy. Hello, boy. But not being totally sure of what it is, he calls on friend Doug for a second opinion. Well, come and have a look. Ah. You have to get that big again. Oh, OK. That's you enough. see that? Yeah, it's a male house sparrow. Right. I suppose I've got to be grateful that a bird has, in fact, found the box. Yes. Swifts. Four, five, yeah. six of them. There we go. Come on. Here they come, here they come. Five, six, or oh, five. That's the sound of summer. Oh, look! That's unbelievable, isn't it? That's amazing. They know something's good about this place. This has just got to be an absolute bonus today. Georgia's about to find out the results of her secret filming project. With her trail camera in her school bag, she is hoping to have captured foxes for the first time. Whew. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> what have I got? Oh, there's three foxes! Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, this is super. They're all, they, they, they can see the trail camera. They're all looking at it. They're right and big. Whoa, what was that all about then? It looked like he was having a fight with the other one. Oh, we've got some fighting playing going on here. Oh, he's really scared. He's not sure what the trail camera's all about. Oh, that is so lovely. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, that's brilliant. It'd be brilliant to share on my blog and then um, on my Facebook page and Twitter as well to show the people what I've recorded. And also, it's on the school field, so it's, it's just weird how, like, most kids would go to school, learn all the lessons and everything, eh? and not think about what's on the school field. For LB and Amanda, the hunt is over. It's time to return home to Somerset. The expectation was to film loads of piglets running across paths with their mother. One or two stood on a path with the sun going just behind, behind them coming down, you know. Sort of shots you dream of having. That was the pipe dream, um, I That think. was the pipe dream, but the reality. of course the reality was no ball. We tried, we did try very hard, but um, like all wildlife filming, it's not going to go to order, you know, it's not going to turn when you want it to. Mind you, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. No, definitely. It really has been an adventure. I saw a woodcock last night, that was nice. Loads of deer. Uh, yeah, the fallow deer, we saw the fallow Lots deer, yeah. Of deer. That was nice. Beetles? Um, beetles, yeah, we saw some beetles. Saw a bang of vole. We got five tapes marked boar with no boar on any of them. <laughs> In leafy Suffolk, it's 1.18 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. Here we go. It's got to be it. It's got to be it. 
Jason has been glued to his monitors for six hours. Go on, little ones. Go on, go on, go, 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 fly. Fly, 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 go, go. Camping out for seven on. nights has not been in vain. He's on! Yes, that's the first one gone. Go, 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 go. <gasps> yes, 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 that's number two's gone. Come on. That's number three out. Number three on the perch. Really is thinking about going. Oh! It's a. Oh! That's the fourth one gone. One left. That's the last one gone. And it's gone. Oh. Job done. The final nest of the season may be empty, but in the gardens of England, the show goes on. Reed warbler. Sheep. Common frog. Little newt. Is that even a newt? Garden tiger. We pink willow tree. <sighs> Robins, hedgehogs, foxes. Our wildlife may not be all that exotic. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm happy with that. But to many, life in the garden offers far more than you could have imagined. I look awful, but I'm incredibly excited. Can you see them just looking at me? I have to take my breaths. It's gorgeous. and they are completely formed frogs. But they're very hard to catch. So here's one I caught earlier. Sad, really, when they go. Oh, it is. Oh, well, I've said it's the end of summer when they go. I can't actually believe I'm sitting here now and not seeing them flying around. Mm. I say when you think they don't ever touch land. I know. To the swifts, I'll see you next spring. I've just got the bats now to uh, <laughs> take me forward now to the autumn.